welcome to the property news on Magic Bricks Now India's first property business channel. I'm Amata Balachandra. Let's take a look at the top headlines at this hour. Big cities in Maharashtra to get mega infrastructure boost. Government now in works to set up MMRDA like bodies for key cities like Nashik, Aurangabad, Nagpur, and Pune. Mega boost for PM's pet project housing for all by 2022 Ahmedabad to get over 2 lakh affordable homes in the next 5 years. Where will these homes be built? Magic Bricks now gets you exclusive details. Deal Street exclusive prime 2.5 acre PepsiCo land in Chembur up for grabs. We get you exclusive details of the industry heavyweights eyeing the deal. Also in the new smoother travel, lesser water logging on Mumbai roads after the season's first heavy downpour. But BMC's much-touted rain app is a slow starter, clocks on average response time of three hours. Coming soon, a special planning authority like the MMRDA for the rest of Maharashtra cities, which means that Nagpur Pune, Aurangabad are set to get a mega infrastructure push. Rishi Deshpande gets us exclusive details on this plan that's in the works. Uh, the Maharashtra government is certainly speeding ahead when it comes to the development of the state. Now, what we learn from the Maharashtra government is uh, that the government has put forth a proposal to set up uh, MMRDA, which is basically Maharashtra Metropolitan Region uh, Development Authority. This will be the parent authority for any and all uh, infrastructure developments. This will uh, this will apply uh, to all uh, the uh, to all the cities uh, within Maharashtra except for Mumbai, that exclusively has uh, its own uh, Metropolitan Regional uh, Development Authority. Now. What Maharashtra government also tells us is uh, that uh, it, it will apply to four cities within Maharashtra which are deemed as metros uh, by the Maharashtra government. These are basically Nagpur, Nashik, uh, Aurangabad as well as Pune. Now note that these uh, states already have a development authority in place but once this new uh, Maharashtra authority comes into place uh, they may uh, well cease to exist. Uh, how will, uh, who will head this body? Well uh, it will be headed by the Chief Minister of Maharashtra Devendra Fadnavis along with uh, the Urban Development Department as well as the housing minister for the state at, at a local level it uh, it will be headed by the municipal commissioner of these uh, four respective cities as well as the guardian minister uh, for these uh, for these cities now when we come to funding uh, this authority will uh, levy a charge of uh, five percent for any land development this will be five percent of the property or the ready reckoner rate and in case uh, there is any uh, there is any development regarding this land or if the value of this land goes up then uh, there will be betterment charges of uh, uh, levied on the development developers for the same. Meanwhile, Deal Street is buzzing. Big land deal is in the works. Close to 2.5 acres of land in Chambur that once belonged to PepsiCo has been put on the block. My colleague Ashwarya Palwal has exclusive details on this deal. A part of the land that Pepsi had bought from Videocon way back in 1996 to set up its second bottling plant has been put on the block. 2.5 acres of land has been put out on the block in Chembu and Pepsi is looking at raking close to 170 crore rupees from selling this plot of land. Now many biggies like Godrej Properties, the Vatva Group and K. Raja Corp are eyeing this land very aggressively. But sources tell us that amongst these three, the front runners till date are the Vadva Group. Sources also tell us that this deal will be closed in the next 15 to 20 days. What this essentially means is that this plot of land will be sold to build residential complexes, which in turn means that Chambur will have more houses to live in. Shifting focus to Bengaluru, now Bengaluru civic body, the BBMP, cracks the whip against property tax defaulters. Now, after naming Manita Tech Park as its top defaulter, the civic body has now named 10 other companies who have defaulted on property tax as well. The list includes Bagmane Tech Park, Orion Mall led by Brigade Enterprises, Leela Palace and Salapuria, among several others. Meanwhile, the legal tussle between Manitha Tech Park and BBMP, something that we've been following very closely on Magic Bricks now, also has taken a new turn. Manitha Tech Park has paid up close to 54 crore rupee as property tax. Only principal amount of the 84 uh, crore rupee is what BBMP um, sources tell us. Over the course of years, that amount has increased to 273 crore rupee, which includes penalty and interest. We also hear from the BBMP that Manyata is refusing to pay up the interest and penalty. 
When contacted, of course, Manyata did not respond to our email. The next hearing is after 15 days and that's something that we'll keep a very, very close watch here on Magic Bricks now. Moving on now, Gujarat government is rolling out a very ambitious affordable housing plan. Ahmedabad could see 2 lakh affordable homes being built over the next five years. In fact, the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation will itself build close to 20,000 homes. My colleague Disha Shah, who tracks the Ahmedabad market, gets us this exclusive report. Two lakh affordable houses over the next five years in the city of Ahmedabad. This is what the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation has plans for housing for all by 2022. In fact, out of two lakh affordable houses, the corporation itself is planning to build close to 20,000 homes through its public uh, housing provision. And the remaining 1,80,000, the corporation will partner with private developers to ensure that these homes are constructed uh, by 2022. In fact, all these homes will come up in the outskirts of the city in areas like uh, uh, Ramol, uh, Narol, uh, Watwa, uh, Vastral and Nicole where uh, there are major lower income groups staying in these areas uh, so the corporation is planning to build affordable houses there so that uh, the lower income groups can uh, afford a home which they cannot otherwise in the major pockets of the city. In fact these all these homes will start uh, from 3 lakh rupee onwards going up to 12 lakh rupees and not only this when I spoke to consultants they told Magic Pricks now that uh, more affordable homes could lead to more jobs and more jobs could lead to the boost of the industrial sector in the coming five years in the city of Ahmedabad. This is Ishasha for Magic Bricks Now. Meanwhile, UK's exit from European Union, popularly known as Brexit, has had an impact on markets across the world. Magic Bricks Now gives you a lowdown what Brexit means for the real estate sector in India. So, Aisha Savant gets us the details. Has Brexit made the London property market more attractive for Indian investors? To understand this, I spoke with international brokerage uh, Sotheby's. Uh, they usually uh, sell uh, properties in London to Indian investors. And uh, when I asked them if their inquiries have gone up, uh, I was told that uh, their inquiries have rather gone up uh, by uh, 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 nearly 30 to 40 percent. Although they said that it is a little early to talk about it because it's just the weekend that has passed. But they said that they had seen an increase in inquiries by about 30 to 40 percent. In fact, they also said that the prices have softened and even the sellers have become more flexible now. So a property which would ideally go out for 1.5 million, now the sellers are okay with selling it for uh, 1.3 million. And uh, the fact that uh, the pound has seen a 31-year low, that has really helped uh, in uh, softening the market on the whole. In fact, they also told me that Brexit has come uh, uh, at an opportune time for Indians especially because most of them are holidaying in London right now. Uh, a, a lot of them have their children studying abroad and they are scouting for properties in London and this has definitely uh, boosted uh, uh, the sentiment for Indian investors and they are now looking at buying properties in London. All right, to get a better perspective on this, of course, joining us on the show is Anuj Puri, Chairman and Country Head at GLL India. Thank you so much for joining us, Anuj. Firstly, tell us how will Brexit impact real estate on the whole? I mean, it is still very early to determine what the impact on the real estate is going to be uh, within the UK, given the Brexit uh, results which came out uh, last Friday. Um, you know, obviously there is uh, nervousness around the result of the polls. Uh, it was uh, purely unexpected uh, that Britain would vote uh, out from the EU. Um, and uh, as the corporates try and understand uh, where they're going to relocate their operations in case they are looking to exit from the UK into the EU, uh, then there will be an impact uh, uh, given that some of these corporates may want to move their headquarters uh, out of the UK. Uh, we heard over the weekend uh, a couple of the banks uh, deciding to move some of their staff uh, from the UK into uh, the other countries in EU um, that will certainly have some kind of an impact on the office market and uh, consequently on the residential. All right. Also tell us how will the London property market fare? Is this the right time for Indian investors to invest in uh, London? 
are we uh, going to see uh, more interest and uh, that is it becoming more attractive for the Indian investors to buy properties in the UK? Uh, so the answer is definitely yes. Uh, and, and the reason I say in a short frame of four days why the answer is yes is uh, purely because of the devaluation of uh, pound sterling. I mean, the pound has uh, certainly fell um, in the last 30 years. We've not seen the devaluation of the pound sterling so steeply as we saw last Friday. So clearly uh, from the international investors, uh, London or the UK has become uh, about eight or nine percent cheaper than what it was about a week ago. And if the pound continues to devalue compared to the US dollars or some of the other international currencies, uh, clearly it becomes a lot more attractive destination uh, for the international community to invest uh, in the UK. This is one of the reasons that uh, many of the bankers are also saying that the UK economy will remain very resilient because with the uh, devaluation of the pound, the economy becomes that much more competitive, that much more cheaper, and you're going to see more international money coming into uh, the economy, not only for the business, but also for the real estate sector, which as I said is that within a week uh, has become cheaper by eight or nine percent purely with the devaluation of the pound sterling. London clearly then an attractive uh, destination for Indian investors. Also tell us, we also know that IT firms such as Infosys, TCS and HCL earn a third of their revenues from the EU. Now the IT sector being a leading uh, occupier of office space in India every year, how will this affect uh, the office space market in the country? So how is that the impact of Brexit going to happen on the Indian, you know, certainly office sector? Uh, fortunately, a lot of our office sector is dependent uh, either on the American corporates, which are really the IT outsourcing uh, companies, or uh, to the local corporates, which is uh, the Indian corporate sector, whether it's media, uh, pharmaceutical, or the financial community uh, in India. Uh, the European corporates is, uh, is really a single digit percentage of the total absorption in office market. So about eight or nine percent of the take up every year is by European corporate. So if there is going to be a slackness uh, in the demand with the Brexit, from European corporates outsourcing to countries like India, uh, it is going to have a marginal impact because our dependence on European corporates for the office space is no more than 8 to 9% every year. All right, Anuj, many thanks for joining us here on Magic Bricks. Now, moving on to our special series, Mumbai Rains. Heavy rains over the weekend exposed a chink in BMC's rain prep armour. While the city as a whole did not report any major crisis, citizens' groups complained that the BMC took over three hours to respond to complaints on its much-touted monsoon app. Disha Shah got us this report on how Mumbai fared after the season's first spell of heavy rain. Areas like Dadar, Parel, Gorigao, Bandra, Kurla, Andheri, both the brunt of the heavy rainfall over the weekend in the city of Mumbai. These areas saw major waterlogging issues and poor quality of roads due, uh, because of heavy rainfall over the weekend. In fact, this has reflected in the number of complaints that BMC has received uh, through their app uh, that is MCGM 24 by 7. BMC officials told Magic Bricks now that they received close to 50 complaints over the weekend alone. Uh, because of uh, major waterlogging issues and uh, poor quality of roads. However, they also told us that they have attended to most of the complaints on an immediate basis. But when we spoke to citizens and activists staying in those localities and areas, they told Magic Bricks now that they accept that BMC has attended to all those uh, waterlogging issues and poor quality of roads, but not on an immediate basis. They told us that it took two to three hours for the local ward engineers to come on the spot and provide uh, immediate uh, and uh, to provide some relief. In fact, they also tell us that there are no contractors who are working on ground during monsoon to ensure that immediate uh, relief is provided uh, on ground. 
In fact, uh, 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 BMC officials also told us that uh, BA, uh, Mumbai received close to 125 mm of rainfall over the weekend, which is considered the highest of all. If you take a look uh, at uh, the entire uh, past two, one week. Lastly, uh, all in all, uh, citizens also told Magic Mix now that though the city is ready to weather the monsoon, but uh, it has exposed few gaps in the BMC's monsoon preparedness plan. This is Ashasha for Magic Bricks now. Monsoons hit the city late, but it's now judgment day. For over two months, our reporters went around the city to find out what work was being done. Is Mumbai really rain ready? What stops you from implementing projects that you all have budgeted for? We cannot Many compare other Mumbai and Mumbai in this country. Why can't we compare? What See? stops you Any from bringing in new technology? Ten years ago, we didn't have any money. So at that time, we broke all the garments and broke the garments. The garments were clear. Mr. Jadav Ji, why are you making the road for a month before? This is not a political discussion. People are suffering from the Mumbai city. If in the city of Mumbai you face any sort of trouble, there's water logging, there's garbage floating on the streets, get in touch with us, send us photographs, send us videos, and as citizens, stop putting up with bad work. Are you watching The Urban Debate? Only on Magic Bricks now. Moving on, in a strong pitch for RBI to allow banks and housing finance companies to fund land transactions, HDFC chief Deepak Parikh has written to the RBI saying merely reducing interest rates is not sufficient. If the Reserve Bank of India were to permit housing finance companies and banks to fund land transactions, it could substantially bring down overall costs for the end consumer. The industry leader was very optimistic for the real estate regulator. In his letter to the RBI, he has called RERA the biggest breakthrough, which will facilitate standardization of norms in the real estate sector and will bring in the much-needed consumer protection as well. Let's shift our focus to interiors now. A home is a reflection of the individual that resides in it. From the living space to the kitchen to the bedroom, each space reflects a different aspect of our personality. So, if you've wanted some quick tips on how to make your interiors shine, then here's a slice of this week's episode of The Interior Show to help you out. We in fact saw a lot of security doors and finally finalized on this. Okay. Then we got to play around with the colours. The first colour was uh, black okay. and uh, which was uh, not doing anything to the door. So, <laughs> so we uh, you know, just painted, painted it to yeah. a brighter colour, yeah. And uh, how about the inner space out here? Um, I see a brick wall that actually stands out because no other wall is adorned with a brick wall. So was that something that you were particularly keen on? You know, having seen such kind of walls in several restaurants and uh, other places, um, and I've never seen it in anybody's uh, home. I thought it would look different, and it, at the same time, it looks kind of warm and uh, comforting too yeah, as, in a does. house. So, how did you go about coordinating the color scheme in the house? So, what we first decided is the main things, like the bigger elements, like the walls and the floor, we go neutral, and then bring in color through the loose items, through the other smaller items. So the first thing we chose on was the flooring, which is we've taken a very neutral grey shade. In the balcony, we have not taken the same flooring. We've taken these uh, Spanish finish, uh, colourful tiles. So that is one thing where we added the colour. And the colours were just superb, you know, they yeah. were pastel yet bright. So, and it, it went with the grey and the white theme really, really well. Yeah, and uh, we added another cabinet, like a bar cabinet sort of thing. So overall it completes and makes it a uh, nice okay. evening space. Like the lighting in the balcony, we've taken mason jars and put Edison bulbs in it. Okay, now that's very cost effective again, right? Yeah. Uh, tell me about the dining area. Uh, it's rather unique because what I noticed was that every piece of furniture is different from each other. Correct. Now what was the larger thought there? You know, I think we just discussed it sometime in the yeah. course of uh, you know doing it that we'll just have a mix of chairs. So out of those happened. two we've picked up from Ikea and two we've got made out here. And the colour that you've stuck to 
is actually black or the dining table is actually black uh, with a brown uh, top and a black base and uh, to add that pop of color we've uh, done red drawers on the credenza table so that's how the color comes in and uh, that's why everything else is neutral you still haven't mentioned one space which you were particularly keen on which is a transparent bathroom uh, actually it was a, a suggestion by ratika and uh, we agreed to it very promptly i think uh, for me it was that the the master bedroom uh, should stand out from yeah. uh, you know the other spaces and that that is quite a, a you know eye catching element of yeah. the of the room and uh, uh, besides that uh, it also uh, gives a lot more uh, space visually yeah. uh, because of the glass uh, the room like looks slightly more open and bigger talking about the fun elements uh, one thing i observed in your living area was the funky couch so we were very specific about the color combination that we want to play with so we had blue and we had this tangy orange shade in mind and uh, for some reason that fabric as soon as we saw it we knew that these are the colors we want to play with you know they took swatches of that fabric of the three different fabrics and they designed it out uh, you know on photoshop or whatever and they um so they gave me what it would look like yeah she mentioned she wanted pop of color but we didn't want to go overboard with it which is why one couch had the color and we got a rug that had color yeah. the bigger chunks we kept neutral so that it all blends together okay like this center table we picked up online Yeah. Because it's uh, brown, it's matching with the entire TV cabinet. Yeah. Tell me about the master bedroom. Uh, how did you go about designing that, keeping her brief in mind? Out there, we didn't want to add too much color because we wanted it very uh, simple. So we were very sure that we wanted a veneer wardrobe. We saw it, and we all of three of us instantly really liked the veneer because it had this black grain in it. Yeah. But the only issue we were facing here is that the wardrobe was uh, higher than eight feet, which is the standard height of a veneer. which is why we added this pencil handle detail in the middle so that we don't need to add another element to the wardrobe or add a separate loft to the wardrobe okay what i found rather interesting was you've used a black headboard which is quite rare because in a bedroom you want bright colors the whole bed in fact is upholstered into the black uh, suede and uh, that complements very well with that whole uh, on the veneer the black grain and conceal yeah. handle everything is going together very well we've used uh, black wall lights also yeah. so then it doesn't uh, become too stark in front of the white wall yeah so that's the whole setup is uh, going together with that we've completely run out of time on the show if you have any feedback or suggestions for us write to us on the email id is flashing on your screens we're also on twitter facebook or you can get in touch with us on our website mbnow.in we would love to hear from you with that it's a wrap here on the property news on magic pricks now thank you for watching You can watch live TV on our website mbnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash magic bricks now. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at magic bricks now. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash magic bricks now.